However, once you've got adequate returns, you need to have a source of growth to enable you to reinvest. It's no good having a business that makes 25% return on capital, but you can't sell any more of the product or service and nothing, nothing for them to deploy more capital into. They just have to give you the, the cash back, basically. So we look for companies that have got a source of growth for them to invest in. When they invest in a very high quality company's franchise like that, at high rates of return on capital, they do a better job for you than I can ever do. I was asked in an article recently whether managers of companies are better at deploying capital than, than fund managers. And the answer is, it's not really a fair question because fund managers don't control businesses. The managers who are in control of very high quality business, some of the world's great consumer companies, tech companies, medical companies, and so on, have a different opportunity to fund managers. They have a business that can generate high returns to reinvest in. They just have to not screw it up basically. Easier said than done, but that's what they have to do. Um, where does this growth come from? We look for a business that has a, um, a source of secular growth, not cyclical growth, not it goes up and it goes down. Everything has a bit of cyclicality, but we're looking for, for companies which both at the peak and the trough of the business cycle are bigger than they were at previous uh, parts of the business cycle that grow, not in every reporting period or every year, but they do grow over time. And it typically comes from one or more of these things. Consumerization of the developing world. Um, you know, all the statistics on this are clear. When people in the developing world go past a certain level of disposable income, they become consumers. They're part of a developing economy. They no longer spend all their time sourcing and preparing food. They've got jobs in, uh, in factories and call centers and all kinds of things like that. They need the, the benefits of consumerization and they, they aspire to become consumers as well. Uh, and so that's a very big driver um, uh, of, the, uh, of the growth for some companies. Um, but in the developed world, there's premiumization. Um, we may not be consuming more, mostly, but we consume better. Uh, over time. You know, we may not drink more, uh, hopefully most of us don't, but we might drink better quality. We might upgrade what we do. So whatever it is we're talking about consuming, uh, there's quite a good chance that we will go up the curve in terms of uh, the brand of, uh, of goods that we're consuming over time and premiumize it. Aging populations, an awful lot of people look for growth in, in investment through young populations. In fact, that's part of the drive in the consumerization of the developing world. But aging populations are pretty good too. Aging populations have increased consumption for uh, a number of things, uh, and not least forms of medical care. Uh, and, uh, and so you know, aging populations can be quite a big driver uh, of, of certain uh, uh, companies. Uh, white space, white space, as you probably know, is a term used by people in the marketing uh, uh, and sales business. If they've got a map of, uh, of a world or a country or, or territory, somewhere where they've got no representation, no sales, they color white on the map, a white space. There's lots of white space around the world for people to grow into. I've given you three examples there, eyes. And what do I mean by that? Something like two thirds of the world that needs vision correction doesn't currently have it. They don't currently have access to reading glasses and other forms of uh, vision correction. They will get it in time. Uh, and clearly that will be a source of growth to people like Essel or like Zotica and so on who are in the business of manufacturing eye and, and retailing eye glasses. Payments, um, we're often asked whether we prefer MasterCard or Visa or, or PayPal or Square or Apple Pay or Google Pay. Or, or, and, and the answer is, yeah, well, we've got a view on which one might be better than the other one and so on. But the reality is they'll probably all do pretty well. And the reason they'll all do pretty well is they've got an enormous white space to grow into. Something over 80% of the world's uh, volume of transactions is still done in cash. Basically, it won't be. If we ask our grandchildren, if we describe to our, oh, so our grandchildren, describe them to their children, I would have thought that once upon a time we would uh, get some, uh, some, uh, uh, some material made from uh, 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 a pulp uh, of, uh, of jute, some of that, and, and plastic, and turn it into this note. We'd have uh, uh, holograms on it and metal in it and engravings on it to make it difficult to uh, to um, uh, forge. Uh, and then we put it in armored cars and transported to banks, which would doll it out to us to go and spend in shops. We would pay it back into shops, uh, pay it back into banks. And then that's how we get into the system. They'll look at us rather quizzically, given that all they've got to do basically is walk up to a counter with their phone in their pocket and pay for something. Um, and that clearly is the future. Toothpaste, a bit like eyes. Um, you know, again, something like 60% of the world doesn't yet use toothbrushes and toothpaste uh, to clean their teeth. They will. 
as I am fond of saying on this one, if you want to have a, an intimate relationship with somebody who started cleaning their teeth, best you take it up, I think would be uh, my way of looking at it. And so, you know, for people who are in this industry, like Colgate, there is uh, clearly a very long runway for 